One thing I am, <clears throat> I'm noticing, I mean, I, I, everywhere I go to speak, whether it's, um, you know, England, uh, in, you know, Italy, Brazil, where I've gone in, in a number of times and so on, the um, upper middle class professional women are very unhappy. They're very unhappy. They, they may have power, they may have uh, a nice lifestyle and so on, but there is a, the misery quotient is high, okay? And what I'm saying, okay, you know, as a feminist, is that uh, the women have to stop blaming men for their sense of malaise or misery, okay? Uh, it's not men. It's the, it, there, there's been a cultural change. An enormous change has happened. All right? For the first time in history, men and women are working side by side in an environment. So they, men and women are having more contact with each other than they ever did. Okay? There used to be in the agrarian era, for all those tens of thousands of years, the world of men and the world of women. And those two worlds didn't come together that often. So I can still remember it, okay, in that, in that end of the agrarian era that I experienced in childhood. Okay, the, the women had their own world. They, they, they ruled the private sphere, right? All day, it was multi-generational, okay? There was a solidarity that women had. They were in charge of a tremendous amount of, you know, of life. And the men, you, know, you would come together for dinner, okay? But, you know, the men had their own world. And, you know, and they, they, I remember the, the, the men, the, when, the, when the men would come over to my, grand, you know, my, my grandmother's house, uh, the, you know, my grandfather would be sitting there. They would be drinking. I could smell the coffee with the anisette, you know, they, they would put in, the, in you know, right alongside of it, and the, the, the smoking, et cetera. And the men, we would have the men, the men, the men, okay? And then, and then the women, the women. The women had their own thing, okay? So I think that what women are, are feeling right now, now is a sense of displacement, okay, and loneliness, okay, because uh, it's because there also it's the collapse of the extended family, okay, the multi-generational family into this nuclear family. It could be that this nuclear family thing is toxic, okay, all right. This thing of like a, a you know a man, a, you know, husband and a wife and children in a home in a, in a nice house. It could be like a horrible prison. It could be like it could be like a you know a crucible for Freudian neurosis, okay, uh, you know, and so on, okay. Yeah, so, you know, never in history, <laughs> never in history, okay, have you had this entrapment of the children with the parents, okay? The parents, the parents are now, you know, now they're responsible for everything, okay. And uh, and and then you know the the, the richer, the, the wealthier, okay, the, you know, the more affluent, it, it, you know, a, a, a wife and so on, uh, who has children, okay, the less likely she is going to be able able to rely on neighbors, okay, to like pitch in for her, okay, you know, can you imagine like, yeah, yeah, some, like Scarsdale, you know, the, you know, the wife or whatever, okay, some, something, something, something comes up, okay, she needs to run somewhere to do something, to say to her neighbor, okay, can you watch the kids for, you know, for a couple of hours, oh sure, okay, that's really going to happen, okay, you, you, sometimes you hardly know the neighbors, okay, right, so oddly enough, you know, many working class neighborhoods, you have much more uh, of a, in, in integration there and a familiarity because uh, on the whole, working class people don't move okay as much. Okay, they they often, they often grow up in neighborhoods where they where, where they grew up. They know everybody, etc. Right, and you know it, it's a feature even in South Philadelphia to this day. Uh, in those row houses in South Philadelphia, the Italian section, and so on, people sit on the stoop. Okay, they watch everything that goes by. Okay, they're, you know they're they're monitoring the way kids behave in the street. Okay, there was a whole village quality. You know, in, in the old village life, there was a sense of community and a sense of belonging, a sense of identity. And now today, <clears throat> people have to struggle. Young people have to struggle for an identity. Okay, have to struggle. Okay, everything. Everyone feels very displaced. Right. Uh, in, in another thing. Okay, is that um, is that at the, the high up you go in, in terms of affluence, the less likely it is that you on vacations that 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 you'll be vacationing with your relatives, okay, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? In other words, people who are who people are flying to you know St. Bart's, you know, are not taking their parents, okay? They're not taking all the cousins and so on, all right? But what I when I go to just to you know, you know drive an hour, go to the New Jersey Shore, okay, where working class families go in the wild woods and so on, you see multi generational vacationing, okay? All the all the generations, you see, you see the children running around, you see the parents, and you see the old people, you know, you know they're they're sitting there in their chairs like you know like this and so on, the water's lapping their feet, you know, and so on. I'm going, this is amazing. This is a capsule, okay, of what life used to be like, that contact among all the generations, okay? And the same thing in, in Philadelphia, the, the parks, like Fairmount Park and so on. On and any Sunday, any weekend, you go there, it's working class families who are taking over the, 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 the park benches, you know, in the barbecue pits, and are spending the whole day there 
multi-generations, all together, free, okay, to go to the park, okay, right? That, and that's, and so, so that's why you're getting more and more neurosis the higher, higher up you go the, in terms of affluence, okay? You know, that's, that's why you have some of the most privileged young people, you know, in our, in our society getting into the elite schools and, you know, having to take antidepressants and, you know, throwing themselves out of windows and everything else, okay? Because m m mere material affluence isn't enough, okay, you know, for identity, so, so actually, the stronger personalities seem to be to be coming from working class culture, you know, because they have a sense of their own, you know, place in the universe. Okay? They aren't being shipped around every place. All right. So I think we have there's a lot of psychological ills in the culture, but I want to I'm calling for a moratorium on this anti male stuff. Okay. All right. Feminism has gotten very contaminated with anti male rhetoric. It's completely unnecessary. Okay. All the problems in the world are not due to men. Okay. A lot of problems are due to to the systemic change that happened, okay, in this, this new era that we belong to. All right, well, I, I, I mean, we, we want to have questions, so I should stop. All right? <laughs> Shouldn't I just stop? All right.